Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now is the time to trim your lamps and get ready for the coming of the Lord. Stay tuned for the Midnight Cry broadcast. You've got so many folks that think they're born a certain way. You've got demons who are cultivating people to make a home in them. Let's just get real about it. Let's just tell the truth. You get a demon who's got all kinds of, of wicked, perverse, whatever, whatever it is, stuff going on in his nature, and he's going to find somebody to express that through. He's got to build a home. He can't just walk in. He's got to get your cooperation. But the thing is, he blinds people to the real source. They think the thoughts are just arising out of them, their own brains. And guess what? Our culture is divorcing us from God. Doesn't that all work out nice for him? All of a sudden, you are an evolved animal, evolved somehow magically from pond scum, which somehow came from who knows what. Lord have mercy. I tell you, people go down the road of blindness is incredible. But you got somebody who thinks that they're just an animal there is, no, there is no accountability to anybody. And I have this desire, what could be wrong with my pursuing what I feel and what I want? There's a logic to that, isn't there? You can see how the devil has woven his lie and packaged it in such a way that it sounds totally reasonable. But then again, of course, you've got some people who are homicidal maniacs. Well, they're just damaged. You know, we've got to fix them or put them away or, or do something. Man, this, I, you could go in so many directions with some of this stuff. It's just unbelievable what, what the devil has spawned in our world by this kind of philosophy. You've got Hitler on the one hand who was trying to perfect the race by eliminating millions and millions of people he considered to be inferior. What was driving all that? Evolutionism. He believed in atheistic evolutionism, that we're going to perfect the race. Communists have done the same thing. All these other philosophies that are in liberalism and progressivism, it all, all comes out of the same fountain. We're going to fix the race. But I tell you, we've got, we've got wicked spirits. And, when they do, and here's, the, here's what Jesus is getting at. He goes to an arid place. He's not, he hasn't got a home right now. He's homeless and miserable. So what does he do? He says, then, then it says, I will return to the house I left. So he goes back. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean and put in order. See, that was a picture of an individual who maybe reformed and cleaned up a little bit on the outside, took on a little bit of religion. It was a picture of the nation of Israel that God had brought into a place of knowledge of some truth and blessing. But they never really came in touch with God, not as a nation. And this individual, Jesus, never came in. It's not enough to get the devils out. If you're not serving Jesus, if he is not resident Lord in your life, you are part of the kingdom of darkness. I don't care how respectable you are in society. That is the kingdom you are a part of. It's as simple as that. That's the, that's the kind of stuff I'm not seeing in any of the commentary about all of this. God's people need to know. We don't need to pussyfoot around the truth. So then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits. They weren't, they weren't shy about talking about such things as this. It was real. More wicked than itself, and they go in and what? Live there. And the final condition of that man is worse than the first. That is how it would be with this wicked generation. So you see there's two levels here, but you see the condition of somebody who takes on a little bit of religion but doesn't ever open his heart and let Jesus come to live and reign? He has no defense. All the devil has to do is to come and to appeal to some aspect of your, your selfish nature. 
and he will lead you right down the pathway to destruction. And the thing is, his appeal, we, we think about such obvious things as, uh, you know, murder and, and uh, oh, sexual deviancy and, and a thousand and one other, you know, somebody who's just a homicidal maniac or, or somebody who is a, a drug addict or a hopeless alcoholic or, or one, something that's really obvious to everybody. We think, oh, that's, the, that's what it's like, or it's insanity. It's like the, the, like the legion in, in the Bible. Well, if devils ever get in, that, we'll know it because they'll just be, they'll act up absolutely crazy. They'll be out of their mind and we'll have to lock them up someplace. There are as many different kinds of devils as there are people. And not every devil is geared to man's base nature in that sense. When Satan rebelled against God, he, he didn't say, man, I want to get in the gutter. He said, I want to be like God. I will lift, you know, I'll dwell in the, in the high place. I'm going to be Mr. Big. You don't think there are spirits that provoke people to pride? To greed? To lust for power? To every kind of high thing? To religion? Every sort of thing that is other than Jesus Christ living and reigning that comes out of our nature. There are demons that take over people's lives and provoke them to seek those things. Yeah, you could examine somebody like Adam Lanza. It's pretty obvious. But you, you could go into the halls of our government today. And if God pulled the veil back, you would see demons in high places ruling over this nation. You go back to Daniel, you, you listen to the man pray, and then an angel comes 21 days later and said, the day, from the day you set your heart to pray, God heard you, and I was sent. So what was he doing for 21 days? The prince of Persia withstood me. And Michael came and helped me, and we fought, and here I am. You don't think this nation, this world is ruled over by wicked spirits that are part of Satan's kingdom? You don't think this, the human race is being herded blindly into, uh, into a world where Satan enthrones himself over mankind? And you don't get it. You don't know why things happen. Oh, I'll tell you what, we, that's, we need to wake up and realize what's going on. You got all kinds of spirits you can just see in the scriptures. You got the one that drove the man crazy and he lived out in the, in the tombs. But you got others that were spirits of infirmity. You got others that caused blindness. You got others that caused various, all kinds of other things. Lust, spirits of lust are extremely common. And every one of them affects and just takes over people's lives by cultivating their natural desires. They're dragged away by their own lusts and desires. And Satan makes a home in their lives. I'll tell you what. Now I'll go back to this. That sounds like a pretty hopeless situation, doesn't it? The whole world is helplessly under the power of Satan. Well, that means we're not responsible. Yeah, but God has not left man to himself. God has not left us without a door of hope. From the beginning, God has reached out in love and mercy to enlighten, to, to, deal, to pull people out of this darkness. And he sent his own son into the midst of this wicked world ruled over by spirits. And they, in their blindness, crucified him thinking they were, they were winning the battle and all they did was fulfill God's plan and purpose. That he would take our guilt upon himself and carry it to that cross and carry it into the grave and open a door of hope for everyone. And all those demons in hell that rule over this planet were just having a, they were partying. Man, they were having a big time, but Jesus rose from that dead and he, he defeated every devil. Death itself had no power over him. All hell had no power over him. 
He rose up and he rules and he reigns. And they couldn't even keep him on the planet, could they? The time came, he rose up. And the word tells us that he, he sits at a throne. He, is, he reigns and he rules. And of course, the devil's going to whisper to somebody, well, if he reigns and rules, why does all the bad stuff happen? Because we still live in a world where men reap what they sow. It's not his responsibility to make our lives perfect and sweet here. He, has, he knows how to use the things of this world. But I'll tell you what, there is a door of hope that has been reaching out ever since to everyone whose heart can be opened and will listen. But you know, of course, the devil knows that, doesn't he? He knows better than anybody here how utterly defeated he was. He knows the victory that was won. So what does he do? Well, pretty obvious. You look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the scripture I was trying to remember here. And we all know it. So here's Paul out preaching the gospel. And his method, the beginning of chapter 4, near, near the beginning, says, On the contrary, we, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So Paul's job was simply to preach the gospel plainly. It wasn't to try to trick people. It was just to look them in the eye and say, You are lost. Jesus Christ has the power to rescue you from Satan's power, wipe out your guilt, and make you acceptable to God and give you a hope of eternity. Just a plain message. But then when he says, listen to what he says, and even if our gospel is veiled, something is hiding it. It is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age, see there you have it again. There is a God of this age. He is not going to survive beyond this age. Thank God he's, God's going to banish him forever. But in this present age, God is allowing him to rule because men give him the rule over their lives. They yield to, his, they yield to the darkness. And the result is that they are blind. It says, he, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. So that's Satan's business. You wonder why we see such a, an angry uh, resistance and, and, and condemnation and, and suppression of Christianity in the world today? And I realize a lot of it's, you know, not worth anything. But I'll tell you, there's, they, don't, they don't want to hear the name of Christ. They, don't, they want to banish him from anybody, from every place on the planet, if they could. If the devil could step in right now and kill every Christian and banish the name of Christ, he would do it. He would do it. Thank God God is overriding him for, to, for the fulfillment of his purpose. That's what gives me hope this morning. You know, you can listen to all of this and be afraid. That's not what God wants, but he sure does want us to understand when we, when we turn on the news and we see the, all the incredibly ugly, wicked, vile things that happen every day in our world. And you just see that, God, that the devils have just taken over somebody's life. You know, the uh, Revelation 12 tells us about the victory of the cross, and it tells us how the it warns the inhabitants of the earth, woe to you, the devil has come down to you having great wrath. Why? He knows he has a short time. The cross put an absolute limit on all that he is able to do. Well, if that was true then, what do you think is true now? You think the devil has an inkling that time is moving along and that his, his time is running out? Do you sense the anger in the world today? You see, it, you see somebody like Adam lash out and do what he did, but I mean, it's there. Then you turn around and some of these liberal pundits who are trying to sort it all out, they get angry. It's just anger. There's just a, the devil is just trying to do all the damage he can while he can. 
Man, we need to be on the Lord's side 100% in this hour. So where is the condemnation? Jesus tells us, doesn't he? John chapter 3. What's going on? John chapter 3. You know, we have the wonderful verse, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe, and this is not just ignorance here, this is refusal to believe. You can see from the context, whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. That's what's going on. It's not that men don't have light. It's that they absolutely harden their hearts against the light that they do have. And the result of that is not good, is it? Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light. For Why? For fear that his deeds will be exposed. Man, you want to know at least part of the reason why, uh, why Christianity is so, there's such a lack of tolerance of it. People don't want to hear anything that suggests that they, they're responsible, that they're guilty, that, they're, that there's anything wrong with them. You know, we, we live in a world that is supposedly preaching tolerance of everybody, unless you happen to be a Christian. They feel perfectly justified in being murderously intolerant at times of Christians. And it's murderous in many parts of the world right now. We may get, that, get there here. God will be with his people, though. There's nothing ever going to happen that takes him by surprise, that overpowers his plan. Thank God. We're safe in his hands regardless of what the circumstances are. But that's the world that we live in. There's kids growing up today that have no idea what it was like in the days of well, even the Brady Bunch, let alone... You go back before that. You know, I happened to see an ep old episode of the Brady Bunch the other. What a contrast. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And that was pretty modern compared to Father Knows Best, you know, when I was really, when I was growing up. Some of the, it at least reflected the values that we profess to have as a culture. Family was valued. Do you know the folks that want to take over the world and destroy our society? That's, what, that's one of the things they've attacked. They have attacked deliberately the family. They recognize that that is the bulwark of God's plan for an orderly society that transmits values to the next generation. Tear it down. Encourage people to live together without marriage. Get men to marry men and women to, you know, it goes on and on and on. Anything that will destroy the family. Let's get women to rise up and, and declare themselves to be victims and oppressed and throw off the shackles of male domination. Good Lord. It just goes on and on and on. You think these things have just happened? There are men who have sat around in conferences and rooms and planned these things. Where did they get their inspiration from? It comes from Lucifer. We might as well stand up and tell the truth. And there has been an absolute organized campaign by people Inspired of Satan to destroy the morals of this country. How do they do it? All I have to do is get a hold of Hollywood. All I have to do is get a hold of TV. And you look at the, I mean, you know, I've lived long enough, and some of you lived longer than I have, to see the, the progression where there was, a, there was a degree of innocence. When I was growing up, there ain't no more. The dirtier, the better. The uglier, the better. 
There's no theme that's really off limit. If there are people out there today would do anything if they could get away with it. They hate everything about what this culture has ever stood for. You know, that's where there is some truth in, in people observing how we've moved away from God. This nation has had a lot of warts, a lot of things wrong with it. Certainly been far from perfect, but I'll tell you, in the beginning, there was, and I believe God sat in on those conferences that, just, that devised our Constitution and our way of life. But there were foundational beliefs in that time that there was a God. That was known, that was a fact, considered to be a fact by everybody. It was also considered to be a fact that there was a moral law. There was a moral order to the universe. Man didn't get to make up his own rules. If we, did, if we wanted to, have, to enjoy the blessings of liberty, which the phrase exists in some of the early documents, to secure for ourselves the blessings of liberty, if we're going to have any of that, we're going to have to be ruled by laws and not men. And the laws that we're going to choose are going to have to conform to that law. That was, so, that was taught in law schools, the principle of divine law, for a while. And the devil said, boy, I better do something about this. We've got a system here that is absolutely geared against me. I've got to do something. But do you know, who was it? Charles Finney was a lawyer before he was a preacher. And I remember reading his autobiography, I guess, memoirs, whatever you want to call it. And he talked about a period of time when he was in a certain city and he held a series of lectures to lawyers. And because of their belief, they understood certain base bedrock things. He was able logically, starting from that belief that everybody shared, that there was a God and a moral order, he was able to prove the Bible and the gospel. Logically, to lawyers. Try that today. The devil has gotten hold of the universities, the education system. Every aspect of our society has been strangled. The public education, the values that they're teaching in public education, they're probably not as bad in North Carolina as they are where I grew up in Massachusetts, in New York. But I'll tell you what, it's absolutely... The devil has deliberately just taken over our culture and driven it away from the moorings, away from anything. What we're seeing, the, the simple thing like prayer in the public schools, you know, my God, if we sat there, if we, if we recited that prayer every day in public school, you think I'd stop everything? Those are symptoms. Those are symptoms of a, of a nation that has made choices, and we have made a choice in this nation to reject God. I don't care what you say. A majority of our country has rejected God and rejected everything he stands for. And, I mean, I know, I know there's people that say, well, we got to do this, we got to do that. Well, I don't think I see any stops between here and, the, and disaster myself. I don't want to be just, you know, negative. I want to be realistic, though. Because there's another dimension that we've got to remember. We're not just living in a world that's going to go on and on. We are living within a world that has an end. It has an ex expiration date that God has already set. Now, he didn't, he didn't explain that to the Mayans or to some of these would-be date-setter preachers. At least he didn't give them the date. But I'll tell you, there is an expiration date. There is a plan that is wrapping up. And we are not seeing just evil as usual. You know, there's always been bad things happen. You go back through history, there's been all kinds of ugliness happen. But this is not the same. Something has changed. This has been the Midnight Cry broadcast. If you would like a DVD or a CD of today's message in its entirety, please request it by program number. DVDs are $10 and CDs are $5. And for those who request it, we will send you our quarterly publication, The Midnight Cry Messenger, free and postage paid. Send your request to Midnight Cry Ministries, 
Post Office Box 685, Southern Pines, North Carolina, 28388. We invite you to join us again next week at the same time, and may God richly bless you until then.